Ready to work as a team while your explorers journey through the island in efforts to collect four guardian totems. But watch out for the evil Tiki because he will block your path and trap you in its temple. So move quick and bring the totems to their shrines before time expires and the volcano erupts. Volcano Island Countdown by Spin Master Games. Welcome to Tabletop Island. I'm Bernardo, your host, and today we're going to be taking a look at the board game Volcano Island Countdown by Spin Master Games. This is a game I tr that came out in 2012. I actually took a look to try to see if I can find some info on it uh, online and on YouTube, and I couldn't find anything. I actually took the plunge to get it, and I'm very glad that I did, but let's first take a look at the components. First, you have this really nice, calm island artwork. Um, it shows like the symbols for the shrines, these tiki symbols. It looks great. It has this amazing looking 3D volcano. I know it isn't as detailed as a lot of other things that you may see out there, um, but it is a family game, so they tried to keep it simplistic, which is pretty common, which is really what I like about a lot of vintage games too. Um, now, I, again, this little piece in the middle lights up. It has this really nice tiki piece that's coming out of it. Um, we'll explain a little bit as to how that kind of comes in play in the game. Um, however, the volcano is electronic. Oh, I'm such a fan of that aspect of it. You have these really nice kind of mystery token pieces. They are a hard plastic. You end up putting a sticker on it. That's perfectly fine. It's really sturdy, really well made. The cardboard tile pieces that go on top of that are also really well made. The player pieces are on the simplistic side. It seems to be they didn't put a lot of effort in that side of it, but that's perfectly fine. I did not have a problem with that. You could easily replace it with miniatures if you feel that this game needs it, which I probably will end up doing myself i'll be completely honest with you because i do like this game but let's take a look at how this plays so first you have this electronic volcano in the middle you all start on start and it is a cooperative game now what you end up doing is you push the tiki down and then um it will make a sound then when you push it down again it plays these drums throughout the game and it starts to speed up when time comes up and then finally the tiki taunts you and you only have a minute left now what your objective is you're supposed to go around the island and and get to the mystery tile spots before you can even look at the mystery tile spot you first have to take a look at the objective the objective itself um kind of explains what items are needed in the beginning of the game you start off with seven in the easiest one there are a few other difficulties but i'll be honest with you the easy one is kind of enough for me it's pretty hard and because you can't really dictate the dice too much it, it seems to be the fair and just the most engaging and fun and you always feel like you almost get there every time which is so satisfying um but the cards itself um will show items um the items can range from a crowbar to a shovel uh, a backpack which is a mystery item and there's even a specialty card too that allows you to move four extra spaces now how you move in the game you roll a die and it tells you the number of spaces you move however there is a tiki marker who is trying to stop you from winning the game what happens is you can either roll uh, the one symbol for the tiki or two that means he has either one or two movement now i know that doesn't sound like a lot but there are tiki symbols around the board so he actually moves one kind of jump through each tiki so he can move around the board rather quickly what happens if he moves over you so if he moves from one tiki and it goes over top and past your current marker he puts that into the tiki temple goes in front of it and locks you in the only way to get out is if someone else rolls a tiki and can move that tiki to get it out of the way to allow you to escape in the opposite direction and this constantly happens throughout the game you can also roll a draw side which allows you to draw more item cards which is extremely important which is why i think the easy part um kind of the easy format for the game is the best route to go because you start off with seven and rolling them doesn't come up as often so it's a lot easier to meet up with the card you already have if you don't end up drawing as often as you would like because again you can't dictate that by rolling it I know, sounds, huh. Now again, while you're doing that, the music's constantly playing and you have 
it sound feels like a lot i believe it's about 30 minutes but it just never is enough you actually kind of get so absorbed in the game and what you feel like you need to do that you lose track of time entirely and it comes down to the wire almost every single time it has an impossible mode where you only start with one card i dare you guys to try that because if you can get a full play through winning it i would be highly impressed i actually just don't think that's possible at all just because you can't dictate what you roll unless you get absolutely lucky and do nothing but draw for more than half the game. Yeah, that's just not going to happen. Yeah, that, that's definitely not going to happen. It doesn't even sound fun to even try that. Sorry. Um, but the game itself, you're constantly moving. There's a lot of working together and saying, look, I don't have all the items for this. Can one of you guys get over here so you can help me get those items? Um, because I see that you have the surfboard, which there's only one card in the deck for that. And you're constantly shuffling up the deck uh, from the discard pile and just redistributing those cards uh, in this endless loop until the game ends. Now, what this ends up doing, though, is let's say someone goes over there to help you. Um, you split the items and you decide who is going to take it to the shrine. You can take it to any shrine but you need to be able to get to the um, Totem Guardian mystery tokens. Now, with the Totem Guardian mystery tokens, it sounds easy. Get four, put it in the shrines, you win, right? Wrong, because there's also blank ones that absolutely give you nothing, which kind of waste your time just a little bit if you're not covering a lot of ground. And there's also one that has the Totem, which is, oh man, it's so no annoying. It is an ambush um, symbol, which basically means that everyone that helped you get the kind of objective complete so let's say it's two people you all get stuck in the totem's temple and he blocks you out and you're constantly rolling to get out of it much like you would if he went past you which can be really frustrating especially when you're down to the wire and it has happened again this is a cooperative game so you're not really doing that take that guy you want everyone to work together and the only way you can do that is everyone's collecting cards and constantly moving and meeting you to certain locations but the game is extremely fast paced the music is just so, uh, you know, I, I want to say relaxing, but it's also intense at the same time. There's a lot of audio and electronic games that play music that just get on my nerves time after time. But I played this game a few times back to back, and I'm such a huge fan of it. It is an easy to teach, fun for the whole family game. And just how quickly it goes by, that 30 minutes, it is the perfect length for a game, especially for people who don't have a lot of attention span. And because it's a real time game and you're constantly rolling to kind of keep moving through, it keeps everybody engaged the entire time there isn't any downtime even when you're trapped behind the totem because you need them to hurry up and roll so you can get to roll so you can move the totem and constantly get these objectives completed it is such a fun game and i'll be honest with you i was really surprised while i didn't find anything for it online the component pieces seemed all right it didn't seem like they were like the most wow factor things out there but this honestly easily became one of my favorite games that i've played in a long time and i cannot say this enough but i highly recommend this i did end up getting it sealed which is why i did an unboxing there'll be a link in the description where you can take a look at that to see exactly how it comes in and just to see what those pieces look like brand new if that sounds like something you enjoy i think some people do enjoy it game is extremely cheap too i actually ended up getting it for 20 dollars, which is sounds like a lot but you're getting an electronic component and it seems like it's doing quite a bit for the game itself um but that's honestly all i have for you guys today if you are interested in notifications there is a bell up there somewhere please like comment and subscribe i do appreciate any feedback i'm trying to make these videos more and more outrageous and with your guys help i have been doing so Monday, regular board game reviews. Wednesday, weekly update slash talks. And then on Friday is my vintage board game reviews. That is all I have for you guys today. I'll see you guys next time.